you've messed it up. <laughs> You're stupid. And for today's Daily Dose of Stupid... No, oh, my camera's not coming on. Oh, there we go. Yeah, for today's Daily Dose of Stupid, we have the Hallmark Channel. Now, here's the reason that what the Hallmark Channel has done is, is really stupid. But before we get into that, I want to give a little disclaimer here. A lot of people assume that when I do a story, it's because I have some kind of personal stake in it. This is one where I can definitively say I have absolutely no personal stake in it whatsoever. And the truth is, it's because I really hate Hallmark movies. <laughs> I, I actually do like some of the things on the Hallmark channel. I like the fact that they put on old episodes of MASH. I've watched, uh, I think they have Touched by an Angel on. I think that's them. That may be Up TV. Anyway, one of them has that on there, and I watch that occasionally. But as a general rule, I hate the Hallmark channel movies. They're just not my cup of tea. You guys know I'm more of a superhero movie kind of guy. I'll, I'll watch that. I'll watch Star Wars. I'll watch Lord of the Rings, Chronicles of Narnia. Anything that, you got me. I'm good. I, I'm all on board for it. The Hallmark Channel's not really my thing. They're too sappy and, and you know, emotional, and I just, I don't get it. But a lot of people do. And they have caused quite a controversy, quite a stir over the past few days. And originally, what they had done is, there was a report that came out that the CEO of Hallmark said that they were going to look at making some gay Christmas movies. So Hallmark produces like, I don't know, 400, 500 Christmas movies every year. Like It's really closer to like 40 or 50, but it feels like 500, 600. Anyway, so... They make these movies, and they're cheesy and formulaic, and the acting's not super great, but it's their thing. It's what they do. They always make a whole bunch of Christmas movies, and there are people that just go absolutely gaga over these things, and, and I have members of my own family that, I mean, that their favorite thing about Christmas is the Hallmark mo Christmas movies, so, you know, whatever. That, if that's your thing, more power to you. I don't really care for them. However... Part of the reason that an awful lot of Christians and an awful lot of Christian families do like them is because it's one of the very few things on TV that they can put it on and they're not worried about something coming up that they wouldn't agree with or that they're going to have to teach their children on. For example, even a lot of the kids' networks now are moving in the direction of being openly pro-gay. Uh, it was a big story that I want to say about three or four months ago, Cartoon Network had two guys kissing in the background of one of their cartoons. Uh, Disney Channel has featured before gay couples and gay uh, kids that had gay parents, things like that. And so it's getting to the point that as a parent, you basically have two options. You either just cut out TV altogether and we're just not going to watch anything, or you have to have them exposed to that kind of thing at a pretty young age. And that's the reason that a lot of parents constantly feel like they're under attack. Like, I can't even leave my TV on cartoons and actual kids' network and not have people trying to indoctrinate them and shove unchristian values down their throat. And that's part of the reason that Christians feel like they're under attack and that they are willing to do just about anything to make it stop. That they're willing to even back somebody like Trump, who is not exactly a pinnacle of Christian virtue in his own right, to try to figure out a way to get these people to knock it off. They feel like that's the only recourse they have to fight back. I'm not justifying it, I'm just saying that's how a lot of Christians feel. And so, really, Hallmark Channel is an example of this, that even one of the very last places they felt like they could just leave the TV on and their kids could watch it and not be exposed to things that they wouldn't want their kids exposed to, they can't even do that anymore. And Hallmark recently actually saw that this was going to be a problem and reversed itself and said, you know what, 
because it's family programming and we don't want to put on material that is objectionable to these families, we're not going to run any gay movies and we're also not going to show this ad that we had been running about a wedding planning service. We're going to just not show those commercials that feature a lesbian wedding. Now, I was really surprised by this. I did not think that Hallmark was going to do this because, you know, it's Hollywood and they tend to do this, but apparently they do have at least some awareness of who their audience is because they actually said, no, we're going to knock it off and, and you'll be able to, it's important for us that parents are able to just sit them down, sit their kids down in front of the TV and not worry about objectionable material coming through that. Well, when they did that immediately, the rainbow jihad mob came after them. And I actually had a buddy that predicted this, that he said, the second that this happens, we're going to have the, I think he called it the alphabet squad, you know, a playoff of LGBTQ telling us what year it is. And sure enough, there's Ellen DeGeneres saying, isn't it almost 2020 Hallmark channel? What are you thinking? Please explain where are all ears. So apparently stating what year it is or what year it's about to be, is an argument in these people's minds. I don't see how that has anything to do with this material or the the matter at hand, but apparently in their own brain, somehow this constitutes an argument to them. But anyway, so because of this and because a lot of gay celebrities were really mad at them and they got their precious little feelings hurt, Hallmark did a 180 and said, yep, we're going to do gay movies and we're going to have gay ads now. And everybody else is just going to have to deal with it. So here really becomes the big question. Why is Hallmark so terrified of the gay community? Because I'll tell you what it's not. It is not because they're worried that all the gay people are going to stop watching their shows. Because here's the problem. Gay people don't really watch their shows. <laughs> like, I'm not saying that it never happens. But do you really think... The A, the people that are, are homosexual are going to be sitting around watching classy, wholesome, Christian, you know, somewhat Christian-based movies about a Christian holiday? Probably not. And what's even more unlikely is that the gay community is very concerned about the material that their child, you know, even if they're adopted in, in that case, is going to be observing. Do you think that they're really sticklers about the kind of material their their kid is absorbing? Probably not. That's just been my observation from how gay couples raise their kids versus how traditional and Christian couples raise their kids. There's not a whole lot of censoring going on there or concern about what their kids are taking in because they're already living an incredibly hedonistic lifestyle. <laughs> so those... Um, those concerns about certain aspects of, of human existence being exposed to that at an early age, not really there for most gay couples. So if that is the case, then you have to ask yourself, why is Hallmark so worried about it? Well, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, when you have minority, and I'm using minority and air fingers quotes, because I'm including the left's version of minority, which would include people that make choices as opposed to something that they were just born with, but uh, people that, that make decisions and, and being included in that community. When they're a minority and the law views them as a minority, those complaints often turn into lawsuits. And even if the company winds up winning, it's still very expensive and something that they have a hard time dealing with. The second aspect of that is people making these decisions and their friends, they're genuinely more sympathetic to the feelings of gay people than straight people. I think that that has a lot to do with it because you will notice that when a gay person's feelings get hurt, that is the equivalent to like several thousand Christians getting their feelings hurt. See, Hallmark's not really concerned with the feelings of their Christian viewers. They're very concerned with the uh, they're very concerned with the complaints of gay people that probably don't even watch their channel. And I think a lot of that has to do with because they are based in Hollywood, because they are people that tend to to live around people with similar values. They're a lot more concerned about that. Their values do genuinely line up more with them than they line up with the people that actually watch their channel. 
Another one is because they are located in Hollywood. They see people in their immediate vicinity that just happen to, you know, get really angry and they assume that that's how the rest of the nation is. It's something that's very similar to something I have referred to as the Walton's effect. And I'll mention it again here in a second. So the Walton's effect, for those of you who don't know your broadcasting history, and this is where my, you know, incredibly expensive degree in broadcasting comes in handy. One of the things that's interesting about the Waltons and that rise to popularity, that became an incredibly popular show that ran for several seasons. And it almost never made it to national airwaves. Here's why. They ran it in a handful of markets. They ran it in New York. They ran it in Chicago. They ran it in Newark. They ran it in several big cities. And what they found is nobody liked it. And here's the thing that's crazy. They were right. Their studies weren't wrong. It's just people in big cities didn't relate to the the content contained within the Waltons, a story about a family in rural Virginia. And because of that, they assumed that just nobody liked the show. They actually aired it. It got really good ratings nationwide because what happened is the people that were making the show were testing other people that you know, were of similar values and had similar lifestyles and had similar taste in entertainment and found they didn't like it, but people in the middle of the country ate it up. And so this is part of the problem with the media that we have today, that everything is so concentrated on the coast and concentrated in cities that people don't realize that people outside the cities have completely different worldviews than them. And so because Hollywood, and in this case Hallmark, which is centered there, has that set of values, they assume that when they see a whole bunch of their friends and neighbors getting angry, that the entire rest of the country is like that. That there are other, you know, droves of gay people out in, you know, rural Montana that are very upset at them for dropping the gay ads on their channel. It's simply not true. And because that's more present in their life, because it's right in front of them, they assume that that's really the way that the entire country is like, and it's really not. So that's a big part of it. And then finally, The truth is the left are just far better activists than we are. Now, part of that may be that there's at least a a decent chunk of them that don't have jobs and can actually just, you know, take off and protest whenever they want to. That's a big part of it. We saw a lot of that with the environmental protest, for example. But really, the left is just more dedicated to and are better activists than us. And there's several reasons for that. I'm not going to go into all of them. I've talked about this before. I think one big reason could be I think one really big reason could be that they genuinely believe that salvation comes from government and salvation comes from social change. If you're a God-fearing person, it really doesn't matter to you whether everyone agrees with you or no one agrees with you. As long as you believe that you and God are on the right path together, at least ideally, what everybody else thinks shouldn't matter. To the left, all they have, they don't have a God. And so all they have is the social consensus. All they have is acknowledgement from a larger community. That's why it's so important, for example, for the gay community to get acknowledgement from society and the, the, the piece of paper. Because to a Christian, if you're thinking the right way and understand marriage from a biblical perspective, you may want, for tax breaks or whatever other legal reasons, you may want legal marriage, but the truth is it doesn't matter. If you want to be married to somebody, and they're okay with it, and you're okay with it, and your families are okay with it, and your church is okay with it, you don't really care what the government has to say about it because you're married in God's eyes. The gay community doesn't have that, and so they have to have some kind of affirmation from government to tell them that they are married. That's why it's so important to them. But it's something that ultimately shouldn't matter to somebody with a Christian worldview or even a God-fearing worldview. I mean, you could be Jewish or Muslim or anything else. The secularists don't have anywhere higher to go. And that is part of the reason that they are better activists, because it's more important to them and it means more to them to win. For us, winning a political victory is good, but it's not the be-all, end-all. To them, it is the be-all, end-all. Now... 
to understand why this is such a dumb thing, to understand why this is the daily dose of stupid, you have to understand that Hallmark is a very niche market. But now what they've done is tick off both of them. Because now that they have offended the gays, the gays are not going to forgive them. It's the same thing with Chick-fil-A. I mean, you could go on and on. The same thing with Mozilla Firefox. They're not going to forgive them. They're not going to take them in. Once you've offended them, forgiveness is not in their lexicon. You're dead to them. And there is no coming back. And the truth is, there really weren't all that many gay people watching Hallmark anyway. And so now what they've done is they have drawn the ire of the gay community and then ticked off their core base on top of that. So now they've got nobody. And that's why this was such an incredibly stupid thing to do. Because if they had just stuck with their guns and sided with the gay community, well, that really wouldn't help their ratings very much, but at least they would have appeased them and just not said anything about it, not brought this controversy to a forefront. On the other side, if they had stuck with the Christians, they would have ticked off and drawn the ire of the gay community, but at least they'd still have their loyal base, just like Chick-fil-A would have if they had done the same thing. They would still have that loyal Christian base, many of which stuck with them because they respect that they stuck to their guns. And now they don't have either of those two things. They ruined it for both sides. And here's the thing. If you want an example of who was really phenomenal at this, who really showed how to handle something like this, you need look no further than Duck Dynasty. Now, remember that Duck Dynasty aired on A&E, which is not a Christian channel. It's owned by Disney, actually. It is not one that all of the programming is family-friendly or there's no cuss words or anything like that on it. Uh, it's, it's not a channel that is marketed to families that way. It's not a bad channel. I've watched other shows other than Duck Dynasty on it, not many. But the point is, it's not something that really caters to that niche market, but Duck Dynasty did. And even on a more secularist channel, when they wanted to include some things in Duck Dynasty that the family disagreed with, they said, no, we're not doing that. And after interviews with Phil and different members of the cast, the gay people were like, well, we're going to protest. And they said, okay. The executives of the show even said, if you don't include this, we're going to pull the program. And they were like, yeah, that's, that's fine. You see, to them, it was more important to hold on to their values than it was to hold on to the ratings or the good TV show or, you know, keeping out of the ire of the gay mob. That stuff didn't matter to them. And that's one of the reasons that there were so many people that were loyal to the show. And I mean, the thing did run for 11 seasons. Very few shows get to run that long. They've, they've been canceled now. And part of it was, you know, there's only so much that you can do with those guys. They had done basically every redneck scenario that they could have thought of. But I mean, it ran for 11 seasons, no telling how many hundreds of episodes. And it was a fantastic show that I really enjoyed. But the reason that they had that loyal following was because they did stick to their guns. And to this day, I still watch Philip Robertson. I still watch his show and, and some of the things that he does on the Blaze Radio Network and on the Blaze TV channel. And so that's the thing. Ultimately, if you want a master class in how to deal with stuff like this, you need look no further than the Robertsons. Because... They stuck to what they were supposed to do. They held the Christian values as being the most important thing that they could preserve. And God blessed them pretty richly for that. Hallmark had no intention of doing the same thing. And now all they've done is tick off both sides. Now I know you're here because you're interested in information on what's going on in the state of Alabama and around the world, and you've come to the right place for that. But it's YouTube, so you could also just be here because you're bored. If you want me to keep making videos to keep you occupied, you need to go ahead and like and subscribe. Otherwise, you're going to have to go back to playing Minesweeper.